There's a phenomena happening in the world today. And this phenomena is that more and more people seem to be getting real, authentic glimpses of reality. More and more people seem to be having moments where they awaken out of their familiar sense of self, out of their familiar sense of what the world is, to a much greater reality, to something far, far beyond anything they knew. In this pull, this yearning, this intuition that there is something greater than we currently perceive, that who we think we are is somehow intuitively known not to really actually be the truth of our being. The intuition that possibly the world that we perceive is not actually the way it really is. This intuition is really at the seat of spiritual seeking and spiritual yearning. Now, traditionally, of course, this is called spiritual awakening. When we awaken from the dream... As we saw, and as you can verify when you look up into the sky tonight, there's objects out there and there's space. That's basically what the world consists of. And the two dimensions are within you. And humans have become lost in one. So we are here to realize that dimension. It cannot be realized in the future. It cannot be made into an object of a search because it's here now. The moment you're looking for it, you create a future. Now, what is future? It's a thought form. Apart from that, there is no future, except as a thought form. Grace is a mystical substance. You find it in, in the mystery of that which is life. What makes it so awesome is that what you are doing is you're saying, Dear Lord, make me a channel for grace. No, no, God, I am a channel for grace. I was born a channel for grace. It's simply that now I am ready to live as one. Because grace has always been around you. It is that you may think of it as something other than what it is. I think that if you understood how often and how much your lives have been protected, guided, intervened by heaven, your jaw would drop on the floor. very often separated from each other. When you are not there, when you are not really there, you cannot see things very clearly and deeply. You miss everything. And that is the practice of mindfulness. Mindfulness means to be aware of what is going on. 
and we are there by Britain in and out. So breathing in and breathing out is to be really there and to be available. Available to whom? Available to your beloved ones. And also to be ready to encounter life. Because life can be found only in the present. Who are you? Let me just ask you that again. Who are you? Maverick, mother, a lover, a big thinker, a civil servant, a teacher, an entrepreneur, a creative, a dad, a brother, a soul on fire. Are you an introvert? Do you know that you are the M that I am? A poet, a stranger to yourself, a loner, a goddess, a rock star in your industry, a bozo on the bus just like the rest of us? Are you a seeker? Do you know that you are a spark of God? We are completely slave to our emotions. We are not master of mind. But mind is workable. If you really work with mind, we actually can uh, come into control of you, but not control, you control in a wider sense. Not control in a kind of a controlling sense, but that you come to actually understand the mind, so that you come to know the mind, you become the master of your mind. If you have uh, anger, negative, you can immediately dissolve it. Because you can work the mind, you can transform it. So much so that when you do that, there's nothing negative. Negativity no longer exists. If you've removed the negativity, then you reach a certain level down, everything is positive. Even seemingly in obstacles, whatever, is always a blessing. And I actually, what I also notice about the few people I've met in my life that I consider to be completely awake, they learn to stay. present. They don't go off anywhere like we do. They just stay. So in the Buddhist teachings, I say that the root of the problem is actually the self-absorption, this fear of being present. You go from being open, receptive to your mind and to your world and to other people, to your emotions, to the whole thing, which is a sort of a broad feeling far less reactive feeling and it's a more at home feeling. You go from that to going into a small dark room. 
This is called ego. Buddhist teachings talk a lot about ego, ego clinging. One of the words for it is a cocoon, and you just stay in there because you're afraid, basically, of your feelings and the things that life is going to trigger and the things that are going to come at you. As a boy, my maternal grandfather and I would go for walks along the Little White River on the northern part of the reservation. We walked all over. We walked along the river, over the hills, across the meadows, the prairies, wherever. And this occurred over a few years, in any season of the year. He just liked to walk. He liked the physical activity of, to walk, and he to, liked to look at the land. He liked to point things out to me. And I paid attention. But there was something that he did. We would stop every now and then. And he did this frequently. We would stop and he would grab me by the shoulders and he would turn me around and he would make me look at the trail the way we had come to this point. And he would say, remember that trail, remember the way we came. And I dutifully said, yes, Grandpa. He did this a lot. Finally, when I was seven, the year before I went away to school, I worked up the nerve to ask him, well, Grandpa, why are you saying this? Why are you making me look back? And his answer was simple enough, and, and it fell into place for me years later. He said, one of these times I'm going to send you back down these trails by yourself. So what we're doing on this journey is just trying to align ourselves with who we are. Becoming who we are means learning how to rest in empty space when we need to. It's a way of replenishing ourselves. When we hit a wall, we have to go back to the space. And we hang out there until something happens. It takes a lot of discipline, it takes a lot of practice, but it's very doable. We hang out, we wait, we wait, we wait. And then all of a sudden there's something that starts moving. And something.